welcome back to another episode of the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast with your host, Chris Harris of Safety Dog, and myself, John Farquhar of Summit Risk Solutions. Today, we want to thank Mike McCarran. He's come back to join us again. Hot topic going on. He just recently wrote an article for today's trucking, and we're going to get into talking about that. So let's join in with uh, Chris and Mike. Hey, so we've got this great show going on here, as everybody knows, and uh, we got Mike back because uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, trucking again. And you just recently wrote an article uh, about two tiers of trucking company type operations out there. So tell us, tell us about this because I've read it and uh, wow, it's so true to the word. It's, it's not funny. So let, let's natter about that. Well, thanks, John. Thanks, Chris. Have a great holiday, Chris. Oh, I will. Uh, I know you'll have a great time. <laughs> so I, I was asked. I was asked earlier this summer by the uh, uh, TTSAO to chat about uh, the industry, and, and and really they left it pretty open to me, making sense of the trucking industry, which I thought, hey, I've been at this thing forty years, so I could do this with my eyes closed. Mm-hmm. But as I started looking at things, I started realizing. You know, not only how much this business has changed, how much it's continuing to change, and just how much chaos is in the market today. Mm. There's a lot of unanswered questions. There's a lot of uncertainty. And what really hit me as I tried to put this all together, really understand it for big picture, was you're really dealing with two very distinct trucking industries now in the Canadian trucking industry. You've got the legacy carers, in which I've been a part of, all my buddies are part of, all my... uh Drinking buddies are part of uh, older carriers, uh, often with family roots, uh, yep. fa- fairly wealthy, uh, a lot of real estate holdings. Uh, kids don't want the business. Uh, mm-hmm. Kids all have kids all have Ivy League degrees. Uh, most of them don't want trucking, and, and frankly, they're selling in droves. And our in the one of the business I'm a director, Left Lane Associates, we're selling legacy carriers every month. And and the thing about them is that. There's very few Canadians, traditional Canadians, starting truck companies today. It's just not happening. Yeah. I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't name one in, in 20 years. Yeah. Uh, conversely, you've got to, to fill that gap. You've got a group of newcomers, uh, whether it be newcomers to trucking, newcomers to Canada. I saw this trend starting about 15 years ago when I still own MSM Transportation. Uh, we, we've all seen it. Uh, uh, grow. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, they were staggering how many new trucking companies started during COVID. Most of them mm-hmm. by newcomers. Yeah, uh, yeah. they they op- they operate very differently. Very differently. Mm-hmm. They operate in different markets. And I think the thing that's most ironic to me is they actually are direct competitors because the legacy carriers. Uh, they dominate the top 100. Their subsidies dominate. They're known to be the safest operators. And their customers are contract customers. They go direct to customers. You look at those contract customers and, and, and the threat levels. Yes, other legacy carriers are providing threats, but the biggest threats coming from for legacy carriers is actually freight brokers and third parties, yeah. big, big powerful ones who thrive in the newcomer market. Mm-hmm. The newcomer okay. market almost exclusively services a third-party market which is direct competitors to legacy carriers. And that's what I find to be very, very interesting in this. Can you explain the threat of the the load broker? I'm not quite clear on that. Well, you know, load, the load broker business has evolved in, into big business. These big, massive three PLs, they have scale, they have technology, they have mm-hmm. visibility all throughout the supply chain. They have bells and whistles. They're, they're, they, they, they have direct sales force and, and they're, they're big, there's, there's, I don't even know how many brokers are in Canada, but the rally is there's a lot of big, powerful brokers now. You have some, in fact, this is what's really ironic. Some of the largest brokers are actually hiding behind the brands of legacy carriers. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's every one of them has got a massive brokerage department hiding under their brands. So, um, these third parties rely on newcomer carriers. And, and I'll give you a live example. I, I resigned from Left Lane. I, I still own the company. I'm still board of directors. But, but I resigned because, frankly, it was just too much work for me. It was way, all the things I, I didn't want, I was getting again. So I, I passed it over to my partner. And I started uh, a freight brokerage business, in essence, with my son, Patrick. 
And, and you think to all the contacts that I have in trucking, um, I don't think we've, we've moved one shipment with, with one of those carriers, uh, a legacy carrier, wow. because it's just that the, the rates are higher. They, they don't really relish freight brokers business and that's mm-hmm. okay. And, but my point is without new cover carriers, it would be very hard to be, it, it would be impossible to be in business as a, as a third party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is there a downside to using newcomer carriers? Well, they they could be interesting to deal with. Um, that's for sure. <laughs> they they have some different business practices. Um, not as savvy. Uh, I got to be careful. What I say, but uh, we do use them. But <laughs> well, it, it's def, it's definitely interesting. But there's no downside other than you've got to kiss. No different when I started MSM. You have to kiss a lot of frogs to get the prince. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of really good newcomer carriers, but there's a lot of real bad newcomer carriers. Too. Mm-hmm. No different, mm-hmm. no different mm-hmm. than when I started MSM, you know, 30 years ago. Well, the reason I was asking, you'd mentioned legacy carriers, and a couple of times linked to legacy carriers was safety. You'd said, you know, safety and legacy carriers kind of in the same sentence. And when I hear you talking about the newcomer carriers. Uh, that word wasn't uttered. And of course, you're talking to two safety guys. So right. I, I pick up on that and I'm wondering, yep. um, you know, are the newcomer carriers struggling with safety? Um, or was that just m- my imagination when I pick, uh, am I trying to make things up that don't aren't really there? No, I, I don't think you're making, I don't think you're picking, I think you are picking up on something. So, I don't think that you can actually get stats by who's causing the accidents, newcomer cares, legacy cares. But I think that it would be, I think it's pretty obvious that you can make a correlation of the fact that the highway stats are suffering. The numbers are trending in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Number of fatalities per truck accidents, number of accidents with trucks. And I think a lot of that does point to the newcomer carers because I think that in a lot of cases, they're, they're not as experienced. Uh, often they don't have the balance sheets to fund safety programs. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of them are playing the short game because they're brand new. And, and frankly, I think a lot of the problem is starting with this notion of in Ontario, for example, where you know a truck driver needs to be trained for 103.5 hours. Now, whoever came up with that number, I, I'd love to know that. <laughs> yes, but but yes. but but I but I get the sense that uh, I get the sense that people are just being trained long enough to get their license. And I've had several mm-hmm. instances with large distribution centers. They actually have shunters on staff full time because a lot of the newcomer carriers and drivers can't back the track back in, yep. into into the into the yard. So I think yep. there is a direct correlation, Chris. That's just instincts and mm-hmm. the math. And, and I don't think anyone's going to say you know what those numbers are, but I do recall seeing something in that Toronto Star Expose from the OTA that the number of incidents with newcomer uh, cares is far higher uh, uh, when the trucks get pulled over. The number of incidents. Yeah. I just I got to be careful because I don't have those stats. <clears throat> yeah, no, but yep. yeah, to me it makes sense because yeah. as you said earlier, they don't have the newcomer carriers just aren't as experienced yet, um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's like anybody. If I got a new trucking license. I might have more crashes than an experienced guy because I'm not as experienced yet. Well, the same thing for management of a trucking company. And when you're new, um, as you said earlier, maybe they're watching the bottom line a little tighter and just don't have the resources to do everything um, that the legacy carriers can do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. I agree. I, I was going to say, I, I can add to some of that because I, I go out and I see a lot of motor carriers. I, I do a lot of risk evaluations on behalf of different insurance companies as well as motor carriers themselves. And probably uh, two two aspects that I'm seeing quite frequently in the, in the new entrant market is you're seeing a fellow uh, or a person who has uh, maybe been an owner operator for a motor carrier and decided, hey, I want to start my own business and, and now there are 100 trucks, you know, and it's only taken them a few years because the opportunity has been there. The unfortunate aspect is that person only has the knowledge of an owner operator, not of the exact rules. And I was a safety professional director, whatever it be. And they realize I've got to hire some people, but they're not hiring qualified people because, well, that costs a lot more money than just hiring a body to put into that role. And then the other um, type of uh 
new entrant that I'm finding is somebody who has zero experience in the trucking industry and has said, wow, I can make a lot of money in the trucking industry. This is pretty cool. I'm seeing IT people come together and start trucking companies and have diddly squat for transportation experience. And it's like, cool, you can put in a really neat system to run this trucking company, but hang on, you don't even understand the risks and the exposures related to this. And they're not, again, putting out the resources that they need to hire the right people to help educate them on what they need to know to be safe, compliant, operate a good operation and whatnot. And I think what we're seeing is a lot of these guys are behind the eight ball in this approach. And the focus seems to be, I got to make money. I can't hire somebody till I make more money to pay for that person. And then it's like, Hey, you know what? We're making good money. We haven't had any issues. Uh, I don't think I need to hire that person right now. We'll wait till something happens. Well, by the time something happens, now it's too late. And we should have hired somebody long ago. So because once we have some, one problem, we have another, we have another, and it just snowballs from there. It, it would be interesting. Um, I wonder if the insurance industry, each individual company, if they had any stats on uh, legacy carriers versus the new carriers. And I haven't, you know, having worked for one, I know we didn't track it that way, but that was more than yeah, 10 years ago. I, I worked... Yeah, I worked for two, and I know we didn't track anything like that either. So, yeah, I, Mike? I I have my doubts, but it would be a good idea. Are you aware of anything like that? No, I'm really not. But I think people are just starting to become aware of. Yeah, what I wrote about is not was not insightful. It was just stating the facts. But mm-hmm. I think people are just starting to realize that they are really distinct. And to your, the the point John was making, and I think it's important, is that two things. I think when people start out. They're worried about making payroll next week. They're they're not worried about uh, they're not worried about uh, about safety. Uh, you get a situation where spot market rates are down about 30 40 uh, percent over COVID, which is why newcomer why brokers are using it because their mm-hmm. rates are so much lower. Mm-hmm. But yep. you know that's a challenge. And I think the biggest thing I found in my experience in trucking is that safety starts at the top. You can you can talk all you want about safety. But when the sales manager comes down and say, screw those two hours, go to the customer, it, it just breaks everything. So it really is yeah. a, a cultural thing. Yeah. I know when I talk to the people at XTL about this on, on the per hour side of things, they, they say they really believe that the, the culture part attracts the right type of driver. And mm-hmm. I just don't think, I just think they're, they're so inexperienced a lot of these new cover carriers mm-hmm. they just don't think they really don't think about it they do not think about it but i must tell you when i see someone that has trouble backing into a door mm-hmm. uh which is probably the safest and easiest thing a driver could do a four-year-old could do it and i think of these drivers barreling down the highway 400 401 there around kitcher where it's all construction mm-hmm. and it's oh yes yes wow wow yep and, and and I must say it, and you know, I have the stats in my brain, and and the driving is a lot more unsafe than it was ten years ago. And I think yeah. a lot of that is because of the untrained drivers mm-hmm. that are out there. Because you, you know, we've talked about this before, guys. Mm-hmm. You have to go to a four year apprentice to learn how to frame a house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so you fall off the ladder, you get a concussion. Big deal. That's the worst. You, you break it. You, you break a finger. These these meatheads are, are rolling down the highway at eighty thousand pounds. Yeah. With 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 about two and a half weeks of training, like mm-hmm. I like, have to have a certification in order to cut hair. You know, hairdresser. Uh, 100%. You know, I, yeah. My my teammate is his wife is a hairdresser, and he goes, she's got to have more qualifications than I do to have my a, a license for my commercial driver's license, which is ridiculous so yeah well and and to kind of touch on what you were talking about things have changed a lot in the last 10 years 15 years the congestion on the roadway is horrendous and it's not just trucks it's cars as well uh the trucks have changed you know we've the the majority of automatic transmission of uh commercial motor vehicles is huge now versus having something that had uh, 10 speed 18 speed 13 speed 15 speed whatever it be um I, I was always a big fan of the manual transmission just to help you better understand how to pay attention to what's going on in this vehicle well now they're so easy to drive they're they're like driving a toyota anymore you know just a regular car so a lot of guys i can drive my car i can drive that truck and and now unfortunately they're their concentration is not there as it should be. 
Well, and, and to that point, I think what's happened as well with this, you know, with the OEM struggling to, to I guess, larger computer chips, but so far behind orders, trucks are staying on the road way too long now. Yep. Like, yeah. like what would it, what would have been deemed junk ten years mm-hmm. ago is, is still on the road now. You can't get yeah. equipment, and and, yeah. and 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 the number of trucks I see held together with bungee cords and duct tape yep. is is just appalling, yep. and and that yep. that combines to it because. You know the the new trucks that you know are, are built for safer with the with the alarm mm-hmm. systems and the warning and, and and they make it a safer truck and the old trucks are are that should have been scrapped years ago are now hauled and I a lot of them are by car carriers because that's all they yep. get equipment on. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, it's easier to finance an old piece of junk than it is something brand new, and mm-hmm. you can't get the brand new one. So, yeah. well, well, and then that's. I was, I was going to say, add to that your first. older equipment. So you're you're cutting back on 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 getting newer equipment or maintaining it properly, which goes right into sync with I'm not training my drivers as thoroughly as I should be. I'm not, as you said, Mike, 103 and a half hours. I'm hiring them out of school, put them in a truck, send them down the road. You know, so w- the 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 new carriers today are are not putting the commitment forth that they need to, to match the level of legacy carriers as to what they've done. And, 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 and I, I, I know I've talked to many carriers. If you want to be as successful as those legacy carriers, you've got to invest in yourself and your people. 100%. You have to play the long game, 100%. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, it, it's difficult because you don't want to cast broad brushes because there's a lot of good new cover carriers that yep. are safe oh, yeah. carriers. But, yep. but, but I think yep. we're talking the majority here and not trying to paint with one brush, but there's no doubt that the correlation between a, a more dangerous road based on the stats and the number of new cares being started, both in Canada and the United States, is staggering. And everyone was trying to get onto this pandemic. Uh, you know, we're going to need trucks. The trucks yep. are always going to be full. Yep. And, you know, the market always corrects itself. And you're seeing that already, as I said earlier, the spot market is down, I don't know, 30, 35% mm-hmm. from the heyday mm-hmm. of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy. I mean, just... I did driver meetings over the weekend and I, I always go back to the terrible tragedy of Humboldt and mm-hmm. you know, it's, I think it's an industry sin in Canada at the moment Yeah. that uh, what is it? I think four provinces now have some level of mandatory training for uh, mm-hmm. tractor trailer work and the rest still have nothing, nothing. Yeah. And yet 16 I mean, people lost their lives and nobody where very few people have changed. Yeah. Well, and, and unfortunately, going with that, I'm seeing a trend where new entrant carriers are trying to, you know, I'm going to say it, they're, going to, they're trying to cheat the system because they're going to, they're trying to operate out of those provinces that don't have those controls in place. You know, the, the, the mandatory entry labor training. Uh, they're, they're trying to shortchange the aspect to try and save a couple more bucks. You know, so you're trying, help you're trying to you're trying to shortchange a, a week, two weeks of training. Yeah, like yep. literally. Yeah. Well, and, and they're not realizing the money that they can save. You know, if you if you took into account the number of crashes you've had over the course of a year and said, well, hey, if I could save 10 percent of those, that's how many deductibles, you know, um, add some training in there. That'll more than pay for it. Teach the guys, you know, um, big thing. We've talked about this together, the three of us, you know. Pay packages, change the pay packages, and and you'll change the driver's mindset and attitude as well. You know, you'll end up with a safer driver in the end. The, the, per, the per hour model, the per mm-hmm. mile model, could be, I believe, the biggest contributor to unsafe roads because oh, we, huge, you're, huge. You're you're just chasing miles. Find me yep. another job like that, frontline yep. worker. Yep who can't get a mortgage because they can't prove what their salary is. If we have mm-hmm. a bad winter, they lose 15, 18 days of snow. It's, yep. you know, and, 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 you know, there's a lot of carriers doing things to, 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 uh, you know, downgrade the impact, but I, I don't understand that at all. I yeah. really don't, yeah. you know, you know, the, the, yeah. we've known there's been a shortage for years and we keep trying to do the same old things and same yep. old things and, and, <laughs> and it's not working. And, and, you yep. know, the, the problem is because of that, there's a whole nother type of driver coming into it. And, and a lot yep. of that I think is being created by the not paying people the money, they, the, mm. the quality people you need and the, and the money that yep. they, they deserve for that job. Yep. Exactly. Well, I, just, I just wrote a, an article today and, and I refrained from putting this into the article about the employees 
and uh, Federal Canada paying or making employers pay 10 sick days a year, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And CTA is fighting, not sorry, not fighting it. They've asked for a postponement of it Mm -hmm. as it will negatively impact the uh, the trucking industry. Mike, you're much closer to the trucking industry than I am. Can you explain how that might impact us? Because quite honestly, John and I were having a conversation. I said, John, Mm -hmm. I thought this would be a great thing Mm -hmm. uh, for our industry to better treat our employees. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised that CTA came out against it. As yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure of the rationale, so I've got to be careful commenting on it. But certainly, anything that we can do to improve the job of truck driving mm-hmm. is going to attract is going to attract drivers. So that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. But the, you know, and as I said, I've been away for a couple of weeks, and this has been a real hot button the last three weeks. But it doesn't make sense to me because to me, it's the, it's the working conditions on top of the pay. So not yes. only not only do you not get paid when the wheels aren't rolling at no fault of your own, mm-hmm. you also miss every birthday party, every hockey mm-hmm. game, every every ballet mm-hmm. concert, every yep. every play your kids in. So to me, things like that, uh, not having those compound the problem. And mm-hmm. I, I don't understand the rationale behind it at all. There, there has mm-hmm. to be something for them to be so strongly against it. But I would think that that my initial thinking when I read that at first glance was that would be something that that the newcomer carriers would struggle with and leg- legacy mm-hmm. carriers wouldn't. So mm-hmm. why wouldn't you try and uh, differentiate yourself from them by having, you know, what really is a perk to your job? Yeah, but, big time. And I asked somebody else in our industry that I have much respect for, I asked them the same question and they just said, because – the majority of the drivers or many of them would take advantage of those 10 sick days and the legacy carriers are very afraid as to what it might do to the bottom line, at least initially until they get to build it into the rates. Mm-hmm. So uh, they, he had a concern of, and I think it's uh, valid. I'm not sure, but would it help our recruiting efforts and our retention efforts? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, See, you know, my take on that is if you're worried about people taking advantage of it, they should be working for you. And, and, and that's, that's – it's casting everyone with sort of this same brush. And, of course, people take advantage. And, of course, it's going to cost you more money. But if it can help fill – how much money does it cost you to have a truck parked against a fence? Yeah. How much money mm-hmm. does it cost you to say no to a customer because you can't get drivers? And mm-hmm. I don't think there's just a magic bullet that's going to uh, – no that's going to solve this, but it's all these little things. And it's just, it's, it's, they've been talking about this for years. And it's just one of those things that is hard to make sense of because we've known mm-hmm. this is a problem for years and the current system's not working and, it, and it's not going to change. And, and frankly, I think that's brought on a lot of this pressure of newcomer carers because they've said, Hey, we've got an opportunity to uh, do some things here, whether it be illegal mm-hmm. or not. I'm not certainly going to comment on that, but you've mm-hmm. this whole, economy this this whole mm-hmm. other industries evolved i think out of their willingness to do things that maybe legacy carriers won't mm-hmm. is it right or wrong that's not yeah. that's not for me to comment no no but it's unfortunate because i know i've i've had the opportunity over the last 20 years to go out and evaluate a lot of motor carriers good bad ugly indifferent whatnot and i and i gotta admit It's all about the culture, the culture, the organization, the inside of what's going on. Because I have seen companies who, for years, I want to say going back six, seven, eight years or better, have been paying their drivers by the hour. They they don't have a recruitment problem. Their biggest problem is they got to keep the guys from knocking down the door that want to come work at that company. Amen. Um, You know, and they've been paying uh, extra uh, overtime. Drivers go over their 60 hours, they're happy to pay the the uh, the overtime. They're paying their stat holidays. They're paying them four weeks holidays a year, you know. So to, when you build the right culture, to have something like this new federal rule of 10 sick days come in, they'd be going, cool. That's something that can help the employee. And I don't have to worry about my guys. They're not going to take advantage of it because they don't take advantage of what we're doing now, you know. And, and there's a lot of guys that don't want to take a sick day because – a lot of them are going to go, I don't want to be sick on Tuesday because if I'm sick on Tuesday, 
I'm going to lose a whole week's worth of work because normally I maybe run to, you know, to Iowa and back twice a week. Well, now I can't get that first Iowa in. So I'm not, I'm going to sit home Monday because I'm going to be sick Tuesday for a doctor's appointment. No, I don't want to do that. You know, so there's going to be a lot of guys that are just going to go, no, I I don't need the sick holiday. Thanks for having that there. If I need it, you know, like if something seriously goes wrong, maybe I need a week, you know, five days, give me five days. I got to go to the hospital, got to do this, blah, 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 blah. I've got protection, you know, but uh, I think unfortunately it comes back to culture and a lot of the companies are just not prepared how to deal with it because they've not set themselves up accordingly. I don't, I don't understand this. I agree with you 100%, John. I don't understand this notion of, of sort of dumbing it down to lowest common denominator, this notion that mm-hmm. all our truckers are thieves and they're going to – someone's mm-hmm. going to rip us off 10 days. Yeah, it's going to happen. But instead of – you know, I learned years ago, don't focus on the negative. Focus on the positives because the negatives yep. are going to be there. And, I, and yep. as a kid, I spent all my try, time trying to make people happy and, and mm-hmm. you know, that work for me. And I realized 10% of people are never going to be happy. Just get rid of them. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I think the the negatives or the negative people are the minority. Yeah, Most people yeah. that you hire, yeah. they want to work for you and they want to come yeah. into work five yes. days a week and do a great 100%. job. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know. it's 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 if you treat them right, train them properly, better chance they're going to stay. You don't, they're leaving. They're going somewhere else. You know, and those that are a pain in your butt, I've seen companies where the culture is so good. Their peers will drive them out. You don't have to worry about management doing it because you're going to have the peers that are going to go on. Mike, don't ruin this for us. We got a good thing here. If you don't like it, get your ass out. Go find another job somewhere else. But don't ruin what we got happening. We 100%. like working here. Yep. We, at MSM, we lost drivers all the time for nickel and dime. And then they realize they're sitting for three or four days before they get loads. And they realize that they don't get paid until the, they get, until the customer pays them. Then they realize that the company trucks get first dibs on our operators. And then they realize they don't have the benefits. And, and then they realize a four cents a mile is costing them. And I would always take it back with open arms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're coming up to our 30 minute mark. Um, Mike, legacy carriers, new carriers, what's left to be said on that? Well, I, I think, I don't know if there's anything to be said. I think it's must. It's mostly a recognition that that's our reality today. I think it's a reality that's not going to change. In fact, I think we all know where the trend is going. And I, I think the really thing is just, you know, the whole point of the TTSA talk was I think that suppliers in the business have to adjust accordingly. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with two very distinct cultures. You're dealing with different philosophies about trucking, uh, some right, some wrong on both of them. But ultimately, mm-hmm. you've got two very distinct industries. I frankly would like to see them come together. I would really like. Yeah. To, I would. Lo- I would love to see uh, uh, groups getting together for the good of this business. Uh, I think that I worry a little bit about what's going on in Ottawa. I worry about the, the lobbying efforts moving forward. I worry about trucking being without a strong lobby effort. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, being a target of government, and I would really like it to see if the the, the leaders of both industries and and they are two distinct industries would mm-hmm. come together. Mm-hmm. For, for the good of one industry, for the good of all of us, because as we, we learned during the pandemic, we need a healthy trucking industry. And I don't know how healthy it is right now, frankly. Yeah, no, agreed, agreed. Well, and you've got that unique viewpoint because you've got uh, the connections there to left lane um, that you can see the activity that John and I don't see. And, you know, you would know how many carriers that you're working for that are up for sale right now or other on the other side of it, of course, you're working for carriers that are purchasing other carriers that are up for sale mm-hmm. right now. So you see what we, John and I, and the public don't see until it hits the uh, truck news. Right. Well, you're seeing legacy carriers buying legacy carriers is what you're seeing. Mm-hmm. The legacy yep, yep. carriers yep. will not buy newcomer carriers. Yep. They don't. They don't want the risk of of drive rank. And I understand mm-hmm. that. I, I understand yep. that. But the yep. one thing I will say is that. What's been really interesting in, in, in many of the deals that we've done with legacy carriers is they're actually driver rate component that the owners don't even know about. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it, there's, there's a lot of oxymorons, everything's up in the air, but, you know, ultimately I think that uh, I'm open for the good of the industry that uh, there's at least some clarity brought forth for a lot of these issues that have been hanging out there for years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
Mike McCarran. Thank you so much for joining John and I today. Yes, thanks Always again, Mike. It was great. Also, I didn't have to invite myself on this time. Although I think <laughs> No, no, it's a good deal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all you gotta do, just put your hand up. <laughs> You're always I'm welcome work, on the show, my friend. If you've got something that, work, guys. to say, please, we have yeah. a small platform for you to yell. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a, always a pleasure. Great talking to you again. Thanks. A huge thank you to Mr. Mike McCarran. Uh, talking about the two distinct industries that we now have, legacy carriers and the newcomer carriers. Thanks, Mike. Anytime you're welcome I'm on the show. And for all of you listening and watching, thanks for listening to the TRIP podcast. That's Trucking, Risk, and Insurance podcast with your hosts, John Farquhar and Chris Harris. Thanks. See you next week.